Here we are at difficulty 5, the last video in the series, and it's going to be quite a wild ride because after tallying up the score, a lot of the dungeons had very similar or exactly the same scores, so I had to go with personal opinion. Uh, except for the first dungeon, that one kind of stinks, so we'll just jump into that one. Dark Spore Depths. Anytime a boss says, you can't get me, the dungeon immediately loses 5 points in my book. The story is generic, there's a bad guy amassing an army, you have to go and beat him up. And I'm just, at this point, I'm starting to get tired of these boring caves. There's nothing really notable or interesting about the way it looks or even the layout. So, 4, 4, and 5 coming out at 13 points. A slightly less boring cave, Briarheart Caverns is differentiated because of its verticality. You start off by jumping down a cliff, which immediately I was like, whoa, there's something going on here. And then throughout the rest of the dungeon, there's all sorts of bridges and ramps and valleys. And it just adds a whole new layer, literally, to the dungeon. There's a cool boss fight, multiple adds and different attacks. Geomancer Hailstorm is controlling the changelings, which further proves my theory that the changelings are not inherently evil. Looking at you, Petulia. The layout and the aesthetic of this dungeon, Snowy Canyon, aren't anything super special. But what is cool is that it's actually a fight between yetis and snow trolls, and you can see them fighting in the dungeon, and they'll say things to the player to the effect of this isn't your fight, things like that, so I don't think as far as I can remember that's happened in any other dungeon. Forest Troll Fort doesn't do anything spectacular, but it does everything slightly above average. The layout is open, which it's not a cave, it gets points for literally just not being a cave, the boss is funny, she has plenty of different attacks and add-ons, and the fact that she steals from her own trolls kind of makes it silly. Love that, adds to the story. And then, it looks cool too. You're on a mountain, there's these wooden walls everywhere, and it's just a nice refresher. Again, not a cave, gets points for that. Six across the board, 18 points. Get ready to see the number 18 a lot, because the next three dungeons are also going to even out at 18 points. Unfortunately, Precursor Ruins is a boring cave, but it is, it's spiced up a little bit by some spider webs, spider eggs, Precursor artifacts, and it gets points in the story because it's the only dungeon to feature the Rocklar. And for that matter, I don't think there's any Rocklar in the overworld either, so that might be the only place in the game that they exist. And there's Precursor artifacts, which are important to the ancient history of Free Realms, so there's some lore going on there. And the Rocklar also help you defeat the final boss once you destroy some artifacts, and they'll help you kill this spider thing. 18 points. Haunted Mines is super highly detailed. It looks like something straight out of Elder Scrolls, Skyrim, or Indiana Jones. Very cool boss fight arena for Necrosis, which is actually not the main boss, but the bonus objective. The main boss is unfortunately a letdown. The, it's just underwhelming. But the side objective boss is really cool. And then the story too is very basic, like defeat the bad guy. So the way it looks, super cool. Layout is pretty decent. And then the story is kind of a flop. This is the last of the 18 point dungeons, but I put it first because I like Pirates of the Caribbean. And also the bonus objective where you help the kids get their surfboards is something we've never seen before, so it gets points for that. You start off in a little room, and then you jump down a giant hole in the floor, and then you're in the boss arena. I had trouble picking which dungeon to put in first place and which to put in second place. They're both 23 points, but I opted to put Tanglewood Fort in second place. This is the most dialogue heavy dungeon, not just in the fifth difficulty, but across all the dungeons. There's even non-hostile NPCs you can talk to, like the guards up on the parapet. The premise is that you need to pass some tests before the Royal Guard are going to let you get into Briarheart. So the hostiles aren't even necessarily your enemies, they're just like trying to help you prepare, which is really weird. So first you spar with some recruits, then you need to round up some escaped boars for the chef, Next, you beat up the blacksmiths for some reason, but I missed the premise on that. And then finally, you fight the commander to prove that you're ready for anything. The bonus objective also requires parkour, which is really weird, but I love it. So we're going to give it 23 points for all of what's going on there. Finally, at number one is Trail of Betrayal. 
This one also features some dialogue like the previous dungeon, but not quite as much. Someone betrayed the Chuggawa guards and opened the gates to allow forest trolls to take over these four guard towers. This dungeon actually starts you off with a small troop of Chuggawa soldiers that fight with you, which is pretty dang cool, and you have to retake the towers from the forest trolls. After that, you find out who the traitor was, and it was Sergeant Brutus? Which isn't like a, I don't think we even know who that is, so it's not like a jaw-dropping surprise. Uh, and it's a not-so-subtle nod to the guy who betrayed Julius Caesar, namely Marcus Junius Brutus. The layout is fun and twisting, and the visuals are just absolutely gorgeous with the towers and the trees in the background and the walls. I really love it. And that's all the dungeons in the whole game ranked. That wraps up this series. I've really appreciated reading all your comments, especially you, Adwin Caster, seeing how you're so detailed and why you agree or why some dungeons should be placed differently. Really appreciated reading those. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>